What's going on guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to look at the financials in TradingView. I just learned about this the other day. Uh, TradingView is a great platform for technical analysis, but they always lacked showing the financials. Until recently, I believe they added it in an update or maybe it was just always there and I didn't know, but that's what this video is gonna be about guys. So hold on tight, we're gonna jump into that. But before that, I just wanna give a shout out to Delta Investment Tracker. This is an application that I've been using for a couple of months now on my phone to track all of my investments. It is an absolutely amazing application to use. It will save you so much time and effort while having a crystal clear overview of all of your investments in one place. That's right, your cryptos, your stocks, your futures, your currencies, everything all in one place. Beautiful app. Link is in the description to check that out and a promo code so you could mess around with the pro version as well. Again, link is in the description. So let's dive right in. This is tradingview.com. If you guys haven't heard of it before, I got a couple of videos on it. One of my favorite softwares to use to analyze stocks. You go and you could make an account. So let's just sign in here. I think I have a Google one. Yeah, so here we go. I got all of my stocks and you know some crypto off to the side here. We go up onto the search bar and we will search, how about good old Apple? And if we click on that right there, it'll pull us up to uh, Apple's chart. I'm just gonna collapse this so we got a full picture. And again, great technical analysis tool. You can see I got a candlestick chart. I have exponential moving average 200, uh, not 200. Well, yeah, 200, 150, and 20. Um, exponential moving average I could turn on I could turn that off I could turn on some volume I got 200 and the 50-day simple moving average you could put any technical analysis in this customize it however you want you don't have to have the dark background I like the candlesticks to be orange and white to kind of match my theme going on my think stocks theme with my channel, which if you guys haven't subscribed to, you should definitely, over 100 videos of awesome content. But yeah, very customizable, great technical analysis tool. You go up here to the little FX and you could do a whole bunch of stuff. But the one thing it lacked was financial analysis until recently when I discovered where it was. I believe they recently added this because I feel like I would have known about it before. But if we go down here, you see where it says E and D? E for earnings, D for dividends. So this shows you when earnings was for Apple. So we recently had earnings right here. And it will show, okay, did we beat earnings? Yes, we did. Did we beat revenue? No, we missed the mark by a little. And then right down here, more Apple financials. Click on this and it'll bring you to a financials page. So let's jump over to income statement to start. And first off, I mean, this blew my mind away because we are getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years worth of data, which is phenomenal. Yahoo, I think only gives you four years or three years, but this is seven years worth of data. And another cool part, you got to know how to use this. So we have total revenue and net income. Total revenue is the blue bar. Net income is the green bar. Okay. We got seven years. If we go up here, we could look at quarterly. So we click on quarterly and now it's showing us the past seven quarters. Now, what if you don't wanna look at revenue to net income for whatever reason, you wanna look at something else? Well, you can see this blue bar and this blue right here, it's because we have this selected. Look at that, if we unselected it, it went away. We could unselect net income as well and that goes away. So maybe instead you wanna look at total revenue to maybe earnings before tax and depreciation. That's how you look at it. You just click on it. You could, and you're not limited to just two things. You want to throw a third thing on. Maybe you want to look at net income as well. You could throw a third metric on it. So now we can see here's our total revenue. Here's our earnings before tax interest, ta uh, depreciation, amortization. And then here's our actual net income. We could, I don't know how many we could add. Let's see, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can see, you could just add so many uh, 
different fields into it. I don't know why you would want that many, but I think these three are a great start right here. So I think it's very cool that we could really dive in to the financial statements and then have this chart up here to really show you know, the growth of the company or whatever you want to look at. Now, that's just the income statement. We also have a balance sheet as well. And guys, it's the same deal. So we have total assets and total liabilities, which is blue and green respectively. But maybe out of the total liabilities, I don't know. Whoops, I unselected it. You want to look at deferred income or whatever. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what you, Accounts payable, that's a good one. Maybe you want to look at that for whatever reason. And it's right there. Again, annually or quarterly. Let's jump over to cash flow. Same deal. So cash flow already has three selected. Cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing activities, and cash flow from financing activities. So this is a great pairing to look at to see exactly where the money is coming in and out of from those three fields. But again, we're not limited to that. We could close these out. A big thing I like to look at is your free cash flow and maybe issuance of stock or repurchase of common stock. I love to look at the repurchase of common stock. And you can see we have been buying up a lot of stocks for Apple, which is good. So that has definitely played as a factor into the appreciation of the stock. I'm not saying this pairing, free cash flow and repurchase of common stock is necessarily a good pairing, but these are just two metrics I really like to look at. And then we got statistics. So your statistics is all of your ratios. So currently up here, the blue is our price to earnings ratio and the green is our price to cash flow ratio. And they're right up here. Another big thing I love looking at is debt to equity ratio. So we can see that now, here's the only downfall. Our debt to equity ratio is in decimals where it's gonna be 100% would equal one. So anything below would be a decimal, maybe 50% or see how this right here says 2.16, that's 216%. So you really can't measure your debt to equity with your price to earnings ratio or your price to cash flow. It just really doesn't make sense. So you may want to get rid of that. Uh, but with your debt to equity, maybe debt to asset ratio, that might be a good pairing. And you can see debt to asset ratio has been very low. Or your long-term debt. So you can see our debt to equity ratio and our long-term debt. Long-term debt is very, very low. <clears throat> oh, but you know what? That's also asset ratio. So there, there we go. So here's our debt to asset ratio and then our long-term debt to asset ratio. So you can figure out how much short-term debt do we have, which really isn't that bad. It looks like most of our debt is long-term debt. So you can mess around with all of those. And then you got overview. And this just kind of shows you, hey, here's your earnings. Here's your balance sheet, your income statement, and cash flow. So just a real easy chart to look at. It doesn't look like you can mess around with these. These will just kind of stay the same. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't look like I could select anything. I could do annual or quarterly, and it looks like this stays the same. But these three will change if I do quarterly or annually. And you can see this is only showing me four years or four quarters. It's not getting the full picture. But if I click on it, it just brings me to the tab. So then I could jump back into this. Let's, uh, let's throw on another metric. I don't know, cost of goods. And let's jump back to overview. Yeah, it doesn't change. So the overview will only show you what it has. And for income, you can see that's revenue, net income, and profit margin. It's not like we could change that around. But this is still good information to get a quick overview of whatever you're looking at. And then you could just simply X out right here. And it brings you right back to the stock and right back to uh, the chart. Now, obviously, that's with stocks. Let's take a look at how about an ETF. If we click on this, more QQQ financials. The overview really isn't going to show you much because it's a basket of stocks. Your income statement's not going to show you anything. Your balance sheet isn't going to show you anything. Your cash flow isn't. Your statistics, 
is also not. So really doesn't work for uh, any kind of ETFs, but that makes sense because there's no individual things to look at. Maybe they could have had a statistics thing. That would be nice if they could have had maybe statistics of what the overall debt is or you know, just stuff that you want to look at, the financials you want to look at for an ETF. But they don't provide that. It would be nice to see maybe a breakdown of all the stocks. But beggars can't be choosers. And then obviously there's not going to be anything for a crypto like Bitcoin or anything else. I mean, this is, there are no financials. It's just a, an asset, a commodity. And it looks like we just reached new all-time highs while I'm recording this, which is very cool. But guys, that is how you look at financials. PayPal missed their earnings by a little bit. That's how you look at financials in trading view. I think it is a great layout, very easy to look at everything, and one of my new favorite ways to look at financials. If you guys like this video, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you guys in the next one.